an official math lesson for BYU High School Algebra 51 Lesson 2.8 on Domain. So Domain is basically the set of numbers which are relevant to the function. What that means is the set of all input values. So here we have an example function. Okay, y equals 2x plus 3. The domain is the input values. Remember what we put in for x. When x is 1, what is y equal? So the domain is all input values. Okay? And that's what it says here. The domain of a function is a set of all relevant input values. So it's all numbers we could put in for x. Now, the domain also works with ordered pairs. So like graphing functions... When we talk about 2, 7, go over 2 and up 7, the pair's right there. Ordered pair of numbers. When x is 2, y is 7. Okay. So that would be up here with this function. If I plug in a 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. So that's just what an ordered pair is. It's like has an input value or a domain and an output value or a range. So remember, input the x, output is the y. And um, so that's what a ordered pair is. Remember the first number is the input or the domain. Range is all output values, okay? So whatever y could be. So sometimes they give you a list of ordered pairs. They might give you like three points on a graph or three list of ordered pairs. Order pairs 1, 2, when x is 1, y is 2, next one's 2, 4, next one's 3, 6. And it might say, what is the range of this? Okay. And the allowable inputs for this is 1, 2, and 3. The domain is the first numbers of the order pairs. Okay. So in our first example, they say determine the domain of the function whose ordered pairs are listed below, okay? So it's going to say, like, there's some sort of function, like y equals whatever, and the values that are listed with that function are listed here. Negative 3 and 2. So when x is negative 3, y is 2. So the domain is all the first numbers. Boom, 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 boom. And you can see the answer here. Here is the domain, negative 3, 4, negative 2, 3, 7, and 6. Okay? So it gives you a bunch of listed order pairs. The domain is just the first number of each of the order pairs. Here's a similar uh, problem. So remember that order pairs are just points on a graph. So if I wrote the order pair for this one, it would be x is 1 and y is 2. So the order pair for this is 1. Two. Same with any of these. Let's do this dot. X is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And when X is negative 4, what's Y? Negative 1, negative 2. Okay. So once I list out all of these points with the ordered pair, I take the first number of each of them, and that is my domain. That's what all the input values could be. Notice how it's not like a straight line, it's not like this, it's just like a bunch of dots. So I get the ordered pair, and I take the first number. Here are all the ordered pairs of that graph. And you can see we found 1, 2, right there, and we found negative 4, negative 2. She's right there. I couldn't find it. Okay. And then if you found the other points in the graph, they'd be here. We just take the first number of each of these ordered pairs. And that's our domain. Negative 4, negative 1, 0. Because they're the first number of each of those ordered pairs. Here's a little bit different when they give you a line equation. You'll notice that instead of having dots all over the place, it's just one solid line. And so I can find a point on this line, like this point right here. And I can find the ordered pair for that, which would be negative 1, negative 2, and then positive 1 for y. 
but you'll notice that there's like I can take points like everywhere on this line tons of points so these arrows indicate it goes on forever and ever so there's actually an infinite points on the domain so my domain could have a negative 2 it could also have a negative 1.5 it could have a negative 5 it could have a positive 1.5 it could be any number so the domain is infinite which is all real numbers negative and positive here's a little bit of a different graph you'll notice when it asks you to find the domain for your graph like this okay x can be any number over here okay it could be 2 it could be 3 it could be 3.5 it could be 3.25 but it can't be in any negative numbers, okay? There's nothing over here. So the domain for this is all numbers that are greater than zero. X can be anything greater than zero, okay? Here's another example. Marathon runners runs 10 kilometers per hour. Finished the race in exactly four hours. So here shows the distance and the hours. So you could take this as a function y would be distance equals um, the time, which I'm going to have be x, and then times it by 10 to get the distance. Okay? So remember, my input values are what I put in. So it would be this 1, 2, 3, or 4. But because along the race, I could say, like, how far at 1.5 hours, and then I could plug 1.5 in. That's totally doable to figure out how far I've gone. So it'd be 1.5 times 10, which would be 15 miles. This is my domain, this is my range. So I can choose any number, but I can't go less than zero, because that would make sense to have negative time. And he finished the race in four hours, so he only went 40 kilometers. So I can't go above four hours. He didn't run for five hours. So if I plugged in five, I get 50 kilometers, and he didn't go that far. But you can choose any number between zero and four. Okay? So our, ra our domain is anything. See, it's like this T in the middle. That's greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to four. You could say it in another word that the domain can infinitely, uh, can include infinitely many times between zero and four. It could be 1.1 hours. It could be anything in there, because that makes sense. It's, it doesn't have to be whole numbers for time. Okay. Here's one that does have specific spots that like can't be anything in between, but specific numbers. So it talks about bolts, and they're manufactured, they're not all the same, and the length is measured accurate nearest 0.1 millimeters, okay? So you can't have a bolt and measure it out to like 0 0.0001 millimeters, because it's only accurate to the 0.1 millimeters, and that's how they keep track of the data. It says they have two containers passed or failed, and it needs to be less than 23.8 and greater than 23.2 to be able to be in the past. Um, so it says, what are the domain of the function which matches the length in the past container? So remember that whenever we're having a list of data, let's say like the bolt was 23.2 and then another bolt was 23.1 and another, or 3, another bolt was 20. 3.6 and I have all these bolts listed out but because they round to the nearest 0.1 millimeter I don't have anything else that's like infinite in between I don't have 23.6217 it just gets truncated off so when I look at this data I'm going to have all numbers that are like within 0.1 millimeter so 23.2 and then 23.3, and then 23.4, 23.5, all the way up to 23.8. 
These are all the numbers that could exist in that function. It can't, cannot be 23.25 or anything in between, so it is not infinite. Unlike time, time I could have been like 1.5, 1.25, right? Because they don't round it. And that is it. Good luck, my friend. Have a great math day and a good school day.